Did you kill your wife? No. Did you have anything to do with the disappearance of your wife? No. Nothing? Nothing. Still so many questions about Josh Powell, and still no justice for Susan Powell, as another Christmas has gone by for her family and friends still waiting for closure. An explosion of fire that suddenly ended three lives at the center of an unusually volatile and public family drama. The victims were two little boys. The suicidal perpetrator was their father, a man suspected but never charged in the disappearance of his wife years ago. the A-frames and head frames that are out there, this one was burned to a crisp and pushed into the hole. Only this one. So that tells me that something is down there. Something's being hidden down there. Whether it's her or whether it's somebody else or something else. Somebody is hiding something in that hole. Because of all the other head frames and no vandalism. The only people that go out there are rock hounders and history buffs and cave jumpers. <laughs> Something's down there. Something's down there. It's another day, another, another like digging down on the bird's nest is going to be it. Day two here at the hole, and uh, yesterday or the day before, we were able to get a lot of uh, make, make a lot of progress. We made it all the way down to what appears to be the bottom, and uh, now we have probably anywhere between five, ten feet of solid just dirt and rubble to uh, remove before we can feel like we actually reached the either the bottom of the shaft or best case scenario, there's another shaft side shaft cutting off that way but we won't know until we do a lot of digging. So uh, the first part of the morning, we're gonna spend uh, getting rid of the second bird's nest, the really big, nasty one. Uh, it's got huge timbers in it, it's very unstable, and it's a pain in the ass to even just crawl through. So uh, if we're gonna be lowering the bucket up and down from the bottom all day, we definitely gotta get that uh, out of the way first. So probably gonna take us about two hours to get down there and move all that stuff. And then from there, we'll be able to start moving the bucket and just start digging. I mean, the problem is down at the bottom, it's so small that there's really not more room than, you know, there's, there's really not enough room for more than like two people down at the bottom. All right, well, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna drop down and see what happens. If we go, we both go. <laughs> if we go. So we have both <laughs> support. Keep going another three feet. Okay, so we just got, we passed the first frame. We got down to the second frame. We got down to the main 
bird's nest and cleared all that out and we're just dropping lower and lower and lower. We're really close to clearing out the last little bit and should be probably next half hour should be clear shaft all the way up and down, which is what our goal is right now. bits for the different screws as as we were trying to <laughs> exchange unfortunately uh, he thought I'd already grabbed it and both bits went down the shaft where's a little bit huh where's a little bit you took it no you didn't have it I never saw it no way I thought you pulled it out when the big one rolled out no you didn't grab it out of my hand no for the record, I didn't see the exchange. <laughs> uh oh, I'm wedged. <laughs> Scram, kids! <laughs> Good work, Alan. Take oh. five. Oh, that piece, we can use that. Okay, here, let me just show you what I'm thinking real quick. I've got this beam down in here. you got that beam there. This is a little bit down. We use this piece. There's a spacer right here. Put this one across, okay. drill them down, and that now gives us a beginning platform. Locks us in there and locks us in place. But we have to move this stuff over to the other side and get this out of the bottom now. Get done while I was up. Uh, just most of the timbers all the way out of the way. Okay, so we got like a, a basically a straight shot all the way down now. Yeah. No, I was ready to keep going, but my, my filter plugged on my mask. Yeah. And we needed to let that settle down a little bit. It's real dusty at the bottom right now. I spit out about a tablespoon or two of mud out of both of my nose. <laughs> Yep. Yeah? We're there. Bird's nest are all cleared out. We're gonna let the dust settle. And we're gonna go down and dig and dig and dig some more. We're gonna be here till tomorrow morning, I guarantee it. We're having church. We're having church right here on this hill. bottom of something just go dig 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 it's gonna be a dust fest down there so there's like five minutes of like oh this is so dusty and nasty that it's not actually fun to be here but then we started making some progress moving some stuff. timbers and I was like okay we're making progress on our mission and get a second win
fire is really nice. I got, there was like so much mud in my eyes. <laughs> uh, Day number three, searching for Susan down the mine shaft. Um, last time we were out here, uh, a couple days ago, we got a pretty good system down where we got the bucket going down in there. We are able to fill it up pretty quickly, bring it to the top, and the guys were able to dump it, send it back down. So we're hoping to get the cycle times of buckle up at, or bucket up and down to like 10, 15 minutes a piece, which if we can move 500 to 700 pounds of material every 10, 15 minutes, we're gonna move along pretty good. So. Luckily, all the bird's nests are out of the way. We don't have to dick around with any of the, the, the up and down stuff. Nothing's blocking it anymore. Now it's basically just a matter of get down there and dig. Also, I'd like to introduce you to somebody, Taylor. This is my actual brother. Everybody thinks that Diesel Dave and I are brothers. This is my actual blood brother. Same dad, same mom. A completely different gene pool. I don't know what happened. He's the smart one in the family. I just got the good looks. Um, so Taylor is is he's a climber. He's a he's actually a professor at the University of Utah, and he wanted in on the fun. So he's going to be the first one I down mean, in the hole. What sort of family party does your brother say? Hey, we're going to go dig in a mine for Susan Powell's body tomorrow. You want to go? That was Sunday dinner with mom. I 100% said, I'm, let me clear my schedule. <laughs> <Yeah>. And he <we laughs> was there. Cancel my classes. I'm coming. Yeah, that's the Sparks family way. We just we, you, you, you got FOMO for adventure. We don't want to miss out. <laughs> So here we are and uh, we're gonna get down in there and just start digging like crazy. In fact, I think we're gonna let Taylor pop the first load out. You ready to dig? Psyched, When's the last time man. you ran a shovel? <laughs> it's been a hot minute, dude. Okay, well, <laughs> we're gonna, they're tiny little shovels too. Oh, perfect, yeah, made for me. Yeah, they really are. So anyways, that's the plan today. Uh, luckily, no delays this morning, other than the HET does have a, bat a dead battery. Uh, something got left turned on. Other than that, once we get that started, we're going down. So let's see what happens. So, uh, fun fact for you here, we've been listening to the podcast, it's called The Cold Podcast, about Susan Powell's, uh, Mr., you know, when she went missing, and it's very, very thorough, what, I mean, this guy, Dave Colley, went through and just absolutely researched every nook and cranny of this, and in the podcast, it was talking about how Braden, uh, Charlie, the older of the two boys, talked sometimes about mommy being down in a mine and then he would take it back and be like no she's 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 safe and she's happy he's like where she's where the raspberries grow and then he's like no 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 it's blueberries like he corrected himself like very like adamantly well there's the mine shaft there's a tree over there with blueberries on it so thoughts i think we're gonna find something Right on, man. There's a lot of energy right here saying we're gonna find something today. Don't know that. Don't know if it's a giant piece of galena or if it's gonna be Susan Powell, but we're finding something. Right, Alan? Yeah. At least uh, we'll uh, solve the issue whether this is a uh, candidate or not.
buckets up. All the way up? Yeah, I'll have you probably stop a couple uh, places on the way though. to find down there trying to look down there but they must have just dropped the whole thing so let's go let's see if we have a plug for this let's plug yeah. into the truck what year is it and now it's recording now we'll close it no because normally if it's this way i i'm recording because i don't keep the window out because i don't want it to be sticking <laughs> out where people could read it you know, see that I'm recording them. I just need to slap this. I just need to put this on quick enough. A little damp proof first. And it's not to touch the screen whatsoever. Okay, we're on. Um, flashlight. Turned on. Well, we can turn on later, I guess. No, I've already tested it. It has. We can still see it. Clear vision. Yeah. I just didn't want soil getting in it and jamming up my optical. Gotta love duct tape. Yeah. This may be my 30 second MacGyver moment. Okay, now we just need the line. The mason line, you got it? Okay, uh -huh. that looks pretty open. You know what? Let's do this humdinger. Okay. That's about the right angle. Yeah, because it does need to be facing downward, doesn't it? Yeah. We're in business. Ready? All right, now, get in your belly or something. Well, no, or I don't know. Okay, like... we're not losing my camera. Don't like this. I can't take this. He's too close. He's, oh, no, my God. No, I'm not too close. Jesus Christ, you're too close. My name's Jason, but thanks. <laughs> Plastic covering over it, and then it had a, a oh, flashlight. Yeah. Somebody's trying to search with it for sure. Yeah. Hmm. That's wild. Time to send Dave down to another fresh set of goggles. Fresh set of goggles, you got any? I got a, I got a pair for him. Send them down. All right. Well, see, I knew that getting stuff down to them was an issue, so thought ahead. Got my Creekside fishing pole here. However, when I left the house this morning, there was a hook on here. Meantime, I gotta get Dave a fresh set of eyes down there for him because it's real dusty down there. So, found these in his truck. Obviously, they're for his eyes, so I'll send them down.
right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for an update. We're at the bottom of the mine. We've been at the bottom of the mine for two and a half days now, but we've made some serious progress. I'll show you. You see, right over here is basically, climb down here. So when we started this, when we got down here, the rubble at the bottom of the mine, the pile of dirt and garbage was like right here. See where my finger is? Well, now we're about 10 feet down. Woo! Yeah, there's Diesel Dave. And uh, we're finally getting to a bit of an interesting spot because uh, we're starting to find areas where there's like hollow uh, spots where the dirt didn't completely fill it in. Uh, we're still finding trash and you know junk and stuff like that so definitely doesn't feel like a cave-in and the dirt's still very loose so seems like it was just intentionally pushed in here and you know obviously pushed in with age uh did just find a bone looks like a rib i don't know if it's human i would be very shocked if it was but uh between that and the dead rabbit that's pretty much all we found so far as far as signs of life uh we do have a pretty good system going on with the bucket right now buckets cruising up and down this thing like really really well uh we're getting about two almost three buckets an hour and we're on bucket number 15 that's this is number 16 now so 16, baby. this is uh dave's turn to fill up the bucket my brother taylor just got done filling up his he's coming down from the top and uh we're just gonna keep on shoveling because that's what we came to do anyways uh I'd like to give you a quick tour of our crib. Um, right here is is the crib. Uh, you can see that we've got like a closet space. We've got coat racks and hangers. Got room for the backpack. Over here <coughs> we have a garden hose, which is actually watch this. This is the best part about it. Fully functional. Watch out, Dave. See that? fully functional garden hose we've got a lifting sling we've got the snack uh, the pantry and uh, yeah, we're, we're in business feeling good making lots of progress so uh, I'll update you when we get another 10 feet dug out or so it's it's intense you go down this really long dark shaft first trip heading down to the mine yes finally get to see what it's like down here just riding a old parachute drum down to the bottom of a mine shaft this is cool all the lights kind of go out then you see the the strand of lights lighting up the bottom of this mystery cavern where all this dirt and stuff is just sloughed off into the bottom this is intense Yeah, we're still good. People have thrown stuff in. We found gun barrels, found lots of different kind of metals, found cameras. And it's like, what else is buried under there? I'm loving it. There's three of us down there. Two of them sit up on the perch. One gets down and digs and fills up that barrel, then rides it to the top. The next person cycles down in, loosens everything up, sprays the walls down so it's not too dusty. When the barrel comes back down, that guy gets up on the perch. Next guy fills the bucket up to the top. We just found these two giant beams down there. That we've barely uncovered, so we got this big long sling, choked it, pulled it up, and we got these two massive beams. I'm talking beams that are bigger than heavy D. Put them in the corner, and now we have all this more area for more activities. Now we just gotta keep digging till we find another treasure. Maybe gold, maybe silver. Maybe we'll find Susan Powell. Who knows? We'll never know unless I get back down that hole and keep digging. See you later. When do you think the last time the mine was used? Like they were actually mining with it. When was that? I have no idea. No clue. So. What, how, what are your thoughts going to be if she is there and they do find her? Find her. Then what's your thoughts? Are you just super relieved, happy? It'd be nice if the family will just get an answer. 
and then that will basically end it for them, make it like be easier for them to move on. Do you it's sort of sad that it would have been this late though? Do you ever try to reach out to anybody to say like, hey, this is what we noticed at that mine? I mentioned it to some police officers. I can't remember who they were. It was about around a year or two after, maybe a year. It's sort of, I don't remember very well. I mean, it's been a while. So, if we do not find her, does your fascination then dwindle away? Because I don't really have fascination. I'm just trying to do this to help out. Started and uh, we've probably gone down six foot from where we started. There was a bunch more beams. They had to choke and pull them up, and that made it easier to dig afterwards. It was kind of loose, nice dirt after that. Find a weird crap. That barrel, the gun. Now we found the stock that went underneath it. Some old shotgun. It's just space management. There's all these timbers. We have to have a space to put those. So yeah, hard work. <laughs> for you we are at the bottom of the mine uh, on what was going to be our last bucket load of material to be hauled out tonight bucket number 20 and uh, we got a radio call from the top from the guys saying that the het the, the crane had blown a hydraulic line so what you're saying is they're stuck we lost like 40 gallons of Wonderful. Return line or what? And that means that it can't run the winch, which means we are stuck down here without a rope, without a ride to the top. So the hydraulic line, I believe. Boom. So the plan is, I think we're gonna use the uh, Smitty built winch on my Raptor, and, but it's not long enough. So they're gonna throw a climbing rope on the end of it, and then they're gonna lower that down and raise us up with the winch on the Raptor. Unfortunately, I gave my harness to Dave earlier, so he has my harness at the top, so he's got to send me down my harness and my climbing gear before I can get attached to a rope that gets pulled up by the Raptor winch. Hanging out, man. Just a guy in a bucket. Just suspended over about 160 feet of mystery. Now, is the bucket empty? Well, I'm in it. <laughs> so it's... Say that again, you're not... Well, well, I'm in it. But besides that, yeah, it's empty. And uh, can you just tie it off to the wall? You say the wall, you mean the truck? Oh, you're on the surface? Yeah, I'm actually above the surface. I'm floating above everyone right now. <laughs> they have a radio down there? It's definitely going to be interesting. What is that for, Jim? Parkour at my best. We made some serious progress. As you guys saw, we started like the dirt used to be like right where my foot is. Is that reaching you guys right now? We can't pull them up. Pull the truck forward. We're gonna put that to the winch. We're gonna back the whole truck up. Copy down on the hole. So all this is going out. Is the... Oh man, I'm hungry. We're ready, Jim. Stop, stop, stop.
stop, stop, tell him to stop. All right, stop right there. All right, listen, today was a really good day. Uh, day three of searching for Susan down the mine. First couple days were logistically trying to figure out how to get the bucket down there, how to remove materials. Now we got a dialed system. We were able to remove 20 buckets of material total so far, which I think is probably roughly 10,000 pounds of rocks and dirt moved by bare hand, which I'm very proud of, by the way. Uh, we're making progress. We've dug down roughly 12 feet of vertical mine shaft through the rubble, and it's looking good. It's looking like uh, we're still finding stuff, random stuff. Today we found a VHS or like a little camcorder that somebody dropped down there with a flashlight on it probably in a search for Susan. Uh, we're gonna take that back to the shop and hopefully see if we can see what's on the SD card. We found an old shotgun that somebody had like dismantled and throw down there. We find all kinds of treasures. And like I said, the deeper we go, the older the trash gets. So with that said, the very last bucket of the night, the het blew a big hydraulic line and left us dead in the water. So the Raptor and the guys up here, like these guys kick ass. I'm telling you right now, I've never been more proud of my guys this is like the most well-oiled machine I've ever seen. Like everybody knows what they're doing, keeping everybody safe. And uh, they got us out of the hole safely. And now we're headed home. It's about 10 o'clock. Probably won't be home till about 1 a.m. because it's a long drive. And then we'll be back here again, searching for Susan. <laughs> Cut alert, freshy, freshy. <laughs> wow. We got tired of eating like peasants out here. So today we're doing brats and burgers and dogs. And hopefully we have enough. Got a new hydraulic line made. It's installed under there. We got a ton of oil to pump into the little reservoir here. And that's just it. Then we should be back up and going. Well, can't really come out because this is on top. I hate getting close to that stupid hole. It's a piece of steak that I had from last night left over. So I'm just rewarming it this time over the fire. material we're going to be going through. Uh, lots of the burnt logs. That was the stuff that I remember seeing when we uh, first uh, 
came after the fact. Uh, so we're really getting, we're really close in the area now. So this is what it looks like when uh, I'm at the bottom of the shaft and uh, somebody comes rappelling down above me, just a steady barrage of rocks and debris. Cooper's on his way down right now, he's on the rope. Al is already down, uh, headed to the bottom to grab our tools so that we can come back and work on clearing this bird's nest. Is he also standing the bird's nest? Yeah, he's, he's popping in right now. Everyone, meet Cooper, another member of the team. Big so, debut, buddy. Yeah, I know, <laughs> crazy. All right, guys, I'm taking a quick break from being at the bottom of the mine uh, digging because uh, a couple other guys wanted to go down and dig. So I figured I'd take the opportunity to show you what the mine shaft that we're currently working on used to look like. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is what the head frame looked like. It was all framed out, lots of timbers, and then as you can see, the hole was nice and tidy like this. Basically just a squared off entrance. Uh, this is called the Four Metals Mine, and I have not climbed down here yet. We probably will here before we're done, but uh, this is what our thought is. You know, Josh would have taken the body, and he would have basically just rolled it down the shaft, and then in order to conceal that, he lit this on fire. And as this started to burn, he just started to push pieces into the hole, and then over time, um, you know, this stuff around the top of the hole also got burnt, started to collapse, and that's why we have so much debris down the bottom of the mine, huh, Hans? What's crazy is I didn't know, like, where the round pieces were playing, these yeah. bigger pieces, the smaller pieces, the flat stuff, but, like, well, you'll see, even the metal, like, there's metal pieces down there. We're like, where in the freak's all this coming from? A lot of this is, is investment over time. So if you see, like, pieces that still look like trees, that was, like, the early primitive poor miners. They had no money. They were just chopping down trees. And then as bigger mining operations came in, they'd start buying nicer timbers. Yeah. So that's why it goes from literally logs to lumber so this used to be the old uh oh, whatever shack they had up here basically uh sorting through the material once the ore cart would bring it up it would dump it off right here through the chute and then the chute they probably had a uh, tram or uh or another chute that put it down to the uh to the haul trucks and to the smelter what's crazy is like see the pieces where he would need a torch too yeah if, if he really did do what we think he did exactly you see parts where he would need an actual torch very true <laughs>
right, my friends, we are coming to the end of day number four here in the mine searching for Susan. Now, I wanted to show you how this process works down here because it's pretty, it's pretty damn fascinating to see how, uh, how we're making this happen. So we're currently at the bottom of the mine. As you can see, Al's down there digging away and the dirt, as we've been digging through here, has gone from rocks to timbers to like all stuff like this that we've tucked away. And now it's turned into basically just potting soil. Uh, it's actually like a, like ash. So there's been a big fire down here, as you can see. It caught that post on fire. There's lots of charred pieces of the head frame up top, but we're seeing actual evidence of a fire down here, which is good and also bad. It's good because it means if there was a fire right here, the bottom has got to be relatively close because the fire couldn't burn too high through here because the oxygen depletes too quickly. Um, it's bad because if Josh did throw Susan in here and catch her on fire, um, finding burned remains becomes a little more difficult than finding just, you know, a body wrapped up in a bag or something like that. So either way, we're still very optimistic because the soil is still very loose and we're still finding lots of little, you know, cookie crumbs and, and uh, uh, clues. But what's cool is up there where Rodney is, is our staging area. That's where we started digging, right below where he's at. And we have excavated all of this. And I just used my measuring tape and I realized that the measurement that I pulled shows that right where Al is sitting at the bottom of the mine here. And we keep finding stuff like this, just weird charred stuff. I'm gonna take a look at that. Um, anyways, we've excavated 14 feet of material from there to there from when we started a couple of days ago. 14 feet of material with a tiny little shovel in a five gallon bucket, which we then move into this 50 gallon barrel. One load at a time. And I'll tell you right now, it's been one of the most gratifying things I've ever done. Uh, like we're literally like chomping at the bit, fighting over, taking turns over who gets to, uh, you know, move the, sorry, watch out. Whoever gets to move the next load of material because it's so damn exciting being down there, digging, 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 and finding, you know, clues. So anyways, that's our progress update uh, for today, day four. We have not hit the bottom yet, but we got to call it a night here soon because we still have a three hour drive back and uh, we leave too late then everybody's just completely toast and worthless tomorrow. So we're trying to be uh, sensitive everybody's time and also trying to make the best use of our time out here. But ultimately uh, we've made significant progress. Um, I wish I could say that we found her on day one, but we didn't. And like I said at the beginning of this uh, video series, maybe we don't find her at all, but at the end of the day, we've provided closure to this mine. I'm not giving up hope yet. I still think she might be down here. But uh, like I said, the worst case scenario is now we know, now the world knows that there's nothing down here. Susan's not down here. Or maybe, maybe, just maybe, she's just a couple feet down under this rock and rubble. And uh, we're going to bring her home. Either way, it has been one hell of a journey. Uh, it has been incredible watching my team and my guys come together and learn how to work together. Like the communication has been seamless. We are a legit full blown mining operation now and uh, nobody wants to stop. Everybody's still very anxious just to keep digging and digging and digging. So as soon as Alan is done with this last load here, which is almost full, about five, 600 pounds of material in the bucket. This will be 30, bucket 35. Bucket 35, 35, 35 buckets. Guys, that's almost 20,000 pounds of material estimating that we have removed by hand one five gallon bucket at a time. So, like I said, very uh, gratifying experience for us and uh, we'll be back. So, hope you guys are enjoying this because uh, I don't know if videos and pictures are doing it justice, but this is absolutely insane. This has been one hell of an adventure. And the thing is, you look around, everybody's like tired and worn out, dirty, but nobody wants to go home because we just want to keep on digging. But the problem is we have a three hour drive home. So the next time we come out, 
We'll probably be bringing the RVs so that we can spend the night and just literally do cycles all night long. Because if there's another 10 or 12 or 15 or 20 feet of material to remove, we're gonna get, we're gonna remove it. Because we're not leaving until we hit bedrock, right? I'm not leaving until I get another one of Hans' hamburgers. All right, we're going home. <laughs>